By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at a beautiful fight between two decks you probably haven't seen that often. Well, you've seen my deck before on the channel. It was on a Halloween episode, Backwater Poison. Uh, green and black, a poison deck, and I'm taking on Park, and he's bringing a really cool deck to the table, Attack of the Ants. It's red and it's black, and it's so flavorful. I love the originality of this build. Now, before I start with the deck decks of both of these decks, I got lovely deck photos. Let me first point out to you that, as always, you can also skip that section. The easiest way to do it is by checking the description below. There you will find a timestamp. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there and that will take you straight to the action. As for now, we are going to start with the deck deck. I'm going to start with the deck of my opponent today, Park. Let's take a look at his Attack of the Ants. And here we see the deck of Park, Attack of the Ants. Man, I really love this. Um, before I start actually with the deck deck, I want to point two things out. And those are the two candelabras of Tanas that you see there at the top because they're actually proxies. Uh, I, I sometimes get some questions like, are all of these cards real? Do you play with proxies? If uh, we play with proxies on the, on the channel, I always mention it like I'm doing right now. So if I don't mention it, all the cards are real, at least to my knowledge, they are real. Um, I also mention it in the description below because sometimes we play a rule set that allows proxies. For example, Seven Point Singleton allows proxies. So then, yeah, you're going to see a proxy or two. In this matchup, Park is using these two proxies. And I do understand why, because he made this deck for a Halloween meetup. Um, and, you know, I get it. If you make a deck for a meetup, it's a one time thing. Are you really going to buy two Candelabra of Tonuses with current prices? So I really understand. And I think they're very fitting in this deck because if we look at the deck itself, he's playing with four Carrion Ants. Carrion Ants, a card from Legends, two black and two to cast for an 0-1 creature. And for one mana, you can give it plus one, plus one. Now then if you combine that with Candelabra of Taunus and Mana Flare, also known as Candle Flare combo, then of course you can generate a lot of mana. Now, how does that work? Mana Flare is an enchantment from red, one uh, red and two to cast. When either player taps land for mana. That player adds one more mana of any type that land produced, right? So if you tap a mountain, you're not going to get one red, you're going to get two red. Now with Candelabra of Taunus, you can pay X and tap to untap X target lands. So that means that you can kind of get 50% more mana. If you have, for example, two mountains, you can tap them for four mana, use two of those mana, put them in your Candelabra to untap your two mountains again and tap them again. So then you end up with six mana instead of the original four. So Candelabra of Taunus in combination with Mana Flare is kind of a mana generator. And that of course works together really well with those carrying ants because you can continue pumping them. It also works quite well with the Fireball we see at the top. And of course, Candelabra of Taunus is also just great fun with, for example, a Mistress Factory. You can untap the factory. It can pump itself while it's attacking, which is pretty crazy. Um, you can also use it with Desert, you know, instead of just dealing one damage to an attacking creature, you can untap the desert again, use that effect again, deal two damage to an attacking creature. Maze of If, the same story. So Candelabra of Taunus is a pretty cool card and you can kind of build decks around it. The decks that I've used it in, I usually, it's usually a dead card for me. You know, I find it, for example, at the start of the game when it has no use yet, or I find it just, just at the wrong moments. But I do see that this card is super cool and has a lot of potential. So I'm looking forward to playing against it and I'm hoping uh, you know, that uh, park that you can use it against me and show its true power. Now, there are a few other cards in this deck that I'm really, really liking. Um, he's playing, for example, with Merc Dwellers. I think Merc Dwellers, it's just this funny, beautiful card. It's uh, a 2-2 two -two zombie, a uh, one black and three. And it reads, when attacking Merc Dwellers gets plus two, plus O, oh, if not blocked. So if it's not blocked, it can deal four damage. The cool thing is this card goes together really well with the Meek Stones that we see in the deck of Park here. And it also goes together really well with the Sorcerer's Queens, right? The Sorcerer's Queens will make my blockers O2, oh, so I don't want to block the Merc Dwellers. But if I don't, I'm going to take four points of damage, which is quite a lot. So for a four drop, if it can always deal four points of damage, it is a really good card, right? You would say you would say normally like why not just play you know cards like Urnum who are obviously better but in this build I like it also in combination with the Meek Stone I think it's super cool and then we also see a playset of fal False Orders which is really nice uh, False Orders is a card uh, an instant from Red it hasn't been reprinted it's super cool uh, it says cast this spell only during the declare blocker step remove target creature defending player controls from combat. 
creatures um, it was blocking that had become blocked by only that creature this combat become unblocked you may have it block an attacking creature of your choice so basically you know he's attacking let's say with his merc dwellers i want to block it he can say or his carrying ants it's even better carrying ants having a lot of mana open i have to block it right he can then play his false orders and say you know what your creature is not going to block anything you know it's not going to do anything and that means that his carrying ants is now unblockable so I think False Orders is a super cool card. It's it, it kind of lost its popularity uh, due to the fact that you know the competitive decks tend to play less and less creatures, uh, and 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 they prefer just creature removal over combat tricks. But I think combat is such a cool part of Magic Gathering, and I love the fact that this deck has four False Orders. So I'm really looking forward to see those orders in action. So just a lot of fun cards here in the deck of Park Park. Thank you for bringing this to the table. We are now going to have a look at my deck, Backwater Poison. And here we see my deck, black and green. It's called Backwater Poison and it's all built around poison counters, right? In Legends, that was the first set that actually introduced poison to the game. And one creature started it all and that's this creature, Pit Scorpion. One black and two for a 1-1, one, one, so three mana for a 1-1. One, one. And when it deals damage, that player also gets a poison counter. When you have 10 or more poison counters, you lose the game, right? It's very simple. The same set also introduced this card, this artifact, the Serpent Generator. With Serpent Generator, I can pay four and tap it to create a 1-1 one, one colorless snake artifact creature token that also puts uh, poison counters on your opponent whenever it deals damage. Just one poison counter per damage, right? So these cards obviously are pretty weak according to modern standards and actually in old school they're also weak, but that makes it even more fun to try and make them work and kill my opponent with poison counters. In the dark, luckily, there was a slightly better card coming out. That's this one, Marsh Viper, green, one green and three for a one, two. If Marsh Viper deals damage to a player, that player gets two poison counters. So for just one mana more, remember Pit Scorpion was three mana to cast, this one is four mana to cast, so for one mana more, it got, it's got an extra point of toughness. I feel like they could have made it 2-2 two, two or, or a 1-3. But anyway, it's got an extra point of toughness. And when it damages the player, that player doesn't get one poison counter, but two poison counters. So Marsh Viper is really a lot better than Pit Scorpion. I'm playing four Vipers, four Scorpions, and a Serpent Generator. So my goal is clear, right? I want to put 10 poison counters on my opponent, kill my opponent by poison. Now, I was thinking, what is the best way to do that? I thought, let's go for mana denial. I'm gonna deny the mana of my opponent, try to ramp up myself, go faster than my opponent, and when I have my early scorpion or snake out, my viper, I'm just gonna attack. He will probably have no blockers, at least I hope, because he has no mana, and then I can get him to 10 poison counters. So I'm playing with four sinkholes, four ice storms, three crumbles for the mana rocks, and then, of course, I'm also playing with Paralyze, because Paralyze goes quite well with that mana deny strategy. If he has no mana, he cannot untap his creatures, and that's what you have to do with Paralyze, right? If Paralyze is an enchant creature, tapping the creatures of my opponent, and my opponent has to pay four to untap them again. But if you have no mana, that's not going to work. Now, I'm also playing with four Hypnotic Specters, because what happens a lot is when your opponent cannot play anything out, they've got a hand full of cards. Now, when they then draw into, for example, a Black Lotus, they can cast a Lotus for zero and start doing all crazy stuff and get back into the game. I don't want that to happen. So that's why I have my Hypnotic Spectre to try to kind of force my opponent to discard some cards. Now, um, th the funny thing here is that um, that it's, it's not just for the discarding the card part. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, it's also there to kind of force my opponent to place removal on the Hypnotic Spectre. It's kind of like a lightning rod, you know. When you have a hippie against you and you have no way to block it, you have to remove it because discarding cards is just too painful, especially because it's at random, right? So I'm forcing my opponent to use his removal on the Hypnotic Spectre, meaning that he doesn't have any removal left to deal with my poison creatures. That's kind of the, the hope, you know. Um, there's one really interesting thing going on here because when I um, arranged this kind of meetup to play against Park, I thought we were playing according to Swedish rules. So as you can see, my deck uh, doesn't have any Fallen Empire cards because I think him to Turex would also work really well in this deck. I'm also only playing with one strip mine. Um, and then I saw Park's deck photo and I was like, oh, interesting, two strip mines. So I guess you can play with multiple strips. I see Fallen Empire, so I guess I could have put Fallen Empires in, but let's just say this is casual magic as Garfield intended, right? So it's just a lot of fun. It was a cool match. 
and I really like Park's uh, deck, so I also wanted just to show to show it off here on the channel. I'm also liking my own Poison deck, of course, because I'm going to try to win with Poison again, and I always enjoy trying to do that. Anyway, um, let me know in the comments below how you feel. Uh, what kind of rule set, by the way, do you enjoy playing the most, or don't you care? Maybe we should just care less about that as well. I don't know. Anyway, let's go to the games and let's have a look at this match. Game number one, here we go. So I'm on the play with my deck Backwater Poison, Black and Green Poison Counters, taking on Park from the City of Angels. So that's LA, he's part of that old school group. And he's playing with his Attack of the Ants. So black and red, starting with a Bad Lance, a Mox Ruby. So he's also ramping up. Tapping, and there we see a Candelabra of Taunus. Now, Park also makes altars, by the way. He sent me a few really cool Tim the Enchanter altars. Super nice. Uh, you can check out his work uh, uh, at, on his Instagram. I'll put a link here on the bottom. I believe it's altars by PC. That's the address. It's really nice. If you like altars, have a look. There is a Crumble on the Ruby. Remember, the strategy of my deck is really that Mana Denial. Missing a land drop here, by the way. Hopefully next turn I can cast an Ice Storm, for example. There we see a Mishra's Factory. So that Factory can work together really well with the Candelabra of Taunus. There's an Ice Storm, though. Taking care of the Factory. Still very low on lands, but because I keep attacking the land base of Park, it's not too bad for me yet. There is a Swamp. A Black Lotus. Sacking the Lotus for three. Tapping the Swamp. Ooh, Carrion Ants. How cool is that? This is the first time that I've seen somebody using a Black Lotus to cast a Carrion Ants. That is fantastic. Carrion Ants, of course, an 0-1 creature. And for one mana, you can give it plus one, plus one. And there is an Elves of the Deep Shadow. So that's going to give me a little bit of ramp. But, I mean, I've only played that single Bayou this whole match. That's the only land that I've played out. Let's see what I can do. First see what Park's going to do. Of course he's going to attack. I'm probably going to let this go. He's going to pump it up. So he's going to deal two points of damage. I'm going to drop to 18. If I can find a Paralyze, that would be ideal because he only has two mana, so he won't be able to untap the Carrion Ants. Okay, tapping two first, taking a damage. Oh, tapping four. There's a Hypnotic Spectre. That is actually pretty good. Hypnotic Spectre, 2-2 two, two Flyer, and if Park cannot block it, he's going to be forced to discard a card next turn. He's probably first going to attack with the Ants. But I'm not going to block. I'm just going to let it go. I want to keep my hippie. Looks like Park's a little bit in the, in the tank here, trying to find a way to deal with my Hypnotic Spectre. I don't think he's playing with any um, Lightning Bolts. So there's the attack. I'm doing nothing. Oh, there's the False Orders. This is so cool. So he's using False Orders here to force my Hypnotic Spectre to block the Carrion Ants. He's seeing me applauding here because I think it's such a cool play. And then he's pumping the ants, killing my Hypnotic Spectre. This is beautiful, man. False Orders in full swing. Oh, man. And this is one of the reasons why I wanted to show this match on the channel. Because how often do you see this happen? You know, False Orders to kill Hypnotic Spectre with the Carrying Ants. Black Lotus into a uh, Hypnotic uh, Spectre. Uh, sorry, Carrying Ants. I think that's just great. And here we see me casting a Marsh Viper, a 1-2 creature from the Dark. When it attacks, when it deals damage, my opponent gets two poison counters. So every time I deal a damage with the uh, Marsh Viper, he gets poison. Of course, I still need to find a way to deal with that Carrion Ants. I'm on 16 at the moment. Tapping three. Ooh, Sorcerer's Queen. This is bad. At least I've, I get one attack in with the Viper, I guess, if I attack now. Remember, Sorcerer's Queen is a 1-1. You can tap it to turn target creature into an 0-2 base power. There's the attack. So he's probably just going to take the damage here. Going to drop to 19 and get two poison counters. You know, at least that's something. So there, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping track of the poison counters. I remember, <laughs> I remember Park needed some time. To find his counters. Oh, there we go. 
It didn't take that long, actually. There we go. So two poison counters by Park. So just to clarify, I'm also keeping track of it just to to make sure that that you know that we're on the same page when it comes to the counters. Um, what else can I do? There's a strip mine. Okay, so I can strip a land again, I guess. Which makes the carrying ants weaker, so it's better in that perspective. Um, if I now also have, for example, an ice storm, that would be pretty brutal. Oh, I got to paralyze. And I'm paralyzing the queen here, not the carrion ants. Interesting. Tapping a black. Am I going to do even more? Playing a pit scorpion. Okay, so that's the 1-1 one, one from Legends. It's also a poison creature, but it only puts one poison counter on park every time it's, it deals damage. But he's probably going to keep the carrying ants untapped here. And now you can really see why Paralyze is so good in my deck. Because I've got that whole land removal thing going on with my sinkholes and ice storms. So Park is just uh, leaving his carrying ants on blocking duty. If I can find some more land removal or another Paralyze. There's another Paralyze. This is beautiful. So it's going to be tapped. I can now attack with three poison counters on Park, so attacking him for two, he's going to drop to 17, he's going to go up to five poison counters. That is actually pretty problematic, I'm already halfway. And it's tough for Park to kind of magic his way out of this, because I just, I kept destroying his lands, you know, remember I played a Ice Storm and a Strip Mine, ooh, there we see a Hell's Caretaker. With Hell's Caretaker in my upkeep, I can tap it to sacrifice a creature and then get target creature back from my graveyard directly into play. So, for example, next turn, I could sack the Caretaker itself to get the Hypnotic Spectre back. There's a land drop by Park, by the way, and that's it. So, this is perfect for me. I can swing in again. Not using the Hell's Caretaker here, by the way. Could have used it to maybe sack the Caretaker itself or the Elves of the Deep Shadow to get the Hippie back. Not doing that, though. I'm attacking... And look at that, he's got seven, no, eight poison counters now. Only two more poison counters. There is another pit scorpion. So even if he manages to play a blocker, he's still going to get two poison counters next turn. He needs a solution. There's a sinkhole. Too little, too late, I'm afraid, for Park here. Another Candelabra. Yeah, this is kind of what I talked about in the deck deck with what happens with me when I play with Candelabra of Tannis. I usually find it when I don't need it. There's the attack, and that's it. Park is going to go to 10 Poison Counters. Actually, he's going to go to 12 Poison Counters, winning here the first game on Poison. That's ideal. But now, of course, we can go into our sideboards, and Park can try to find a solution to all this Poison Madness. And we'll catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So it's uh, one game up for me here. Park on the play, starting with a Meek Stone. Let's see what I can do. There's a Swamp, Mox Emerald, five cards in hand. And a pass. I guess I took a Mulligan here, by the way. So I went to six cards and drew card number seven because I'm on the draw and then played out two cards, so I'm on five. So that kind of makes sense. There's a Maze of If, ooh. Luckily, I'm playing with a lot of removal. There's a Black Lotus again. Can Park ramp up into the Carrion Ants? That would be pretty sweet. Second the Lotus here, it seems. What is he going to do with that? A little bit into tank here. There is... Oh, so cool. Merc Dwellers. Using a Black Lotus to cast Merc Dwellers. Park, you are a legend. Game 1, Black Lotus into Carrion Ants. Game 2, Black Lotus into Merc Dwellers. I love it. I love it. I'm, I'm actually hoping that I don't have a Paralyze here. Just hit me at least once with the Merc Dwellers. Remember, if Merc Dwellers is not blocked, it gets plus 2, plus 0, oh, so it deals 4 points of damage. Let's see what I can do playing a Bayou. Okay, Demonic Tutor. What to look up with Demonic Tutor? Actually, it's harder than you think when you don't play with Ancestral Recall. Um, What can I go for? Let's see... I could, of course, go for Paralyze on the Merc Dwellers. I could also go for Land Removal. But the problem with those two options is it's just a one-for-one. One. Um, so I think I went here with Sylvan Library, which may sound kind of odd, but I'm hoping that the Sylvan is going to help me find a, um, 
a paralyze very quickly and then later i can like take advantage of the um of the sylvan later in the game i think that's kind of my reasoning here so i want to find something that i can take advantage of for a longer time than just solving one problem maybe a better option would have been to just go for paralyze paralyze the merc dwellers because here you go he's attacking i'm not blocking so i'm gonna drop to 16. you know time will tell so i'm going back up to five cards again finding a bayou tapping two okay so there's the sylvan so i think i looked up the sylvan Tapping two more. There's a sinkhole. Interesting here. Going for the maze. I think the mountain would have been a better decision. Attacking him for one here. Actually changing my mind. Pointing out at the Sylvan. I think I now kind of realize I'm still attacking though. I think an option here would have been to say, you know what? I'm going to chum block the the Merc Dwellers, because that's four damage. And with Sylvan, I can also pay four life to draw an extra card. And now I'm already on 12. So I think the Sylvan, I'm not really going to enjoy it much. Going to untap. I mean, look at this. Park is not even finding any land, but he's still, he's, he's killing me. I have to find a solution here for that Merc Dwellers. Finding a forest. Tapping four mana. Okay, what can I have? Okay, there's a Marsh Viper. So now I can, I guess I can now double block it. And trade the Marsh Viper for the Merc Dwellers. Desert is actually quite nice against my deck because I'm playing with those Pit Scorpions and of course with the 1-1 tokens I can make with my Serpent Generator and he can kill those with his Desert. And look at this, Park is not attacking. So it kind of stopped his attacks for now, the Marsh Viper with the Elves of Deep Shadow. But it's really great to see, by the way, Merc Dwellers and Meekstone on the battlefield. There's a Pit Scorpion. But I still need to deal with the Merc Dwellers. I, it's so funny, this matchup. Like a 2-2 can create so much trouble uh, problems for me. I'm not playing with any Giant Groves. Maybe I should, but it's always hard with these decks. What do you take out, you know? There are a lot of cards you can put in, but what to take out is the problem. Okay, there's an Ice Storm. Taking care of the desert. Yeah, the desert is a problem. But still, you know, not really doing anything. Only one card in hand. And Park is slowly starting to find more land. So that's going to help him. He doesn't have any black mana, though. He needs some black sources. A Sorcerer's Queen, for example, would be quite nice now for him. Look at that. Taking four points of damage because of the Sylvan. Taking an extra card. But I'm now on eight. This is super risky. If I can find a flyer, I mean, Hypnotic Spectre would be really good on this board. There is a Soul Ring. I wonder at what point Park is going to attack. I guess he's just waiting for now, trying to find the right cards. Tapping four. There's a Hell's Caretaker. You know, not really useful right now, but at least it's another body. Ooh, there is, is this, oh, what's it called again? Wall of Dust? Wall of Earth? I think Wall of Earth, isn't it? And it's, it's an 06, it's from Legends, for one red and one. You don't see it often. It's a really, really sweet deck you've built, Park. It's really uh, a joy to see these cards in action. So there is a sinkhole on the mountain. So now I'm destroying the mountain. And I'm looking at my card. So we're, we're in for a long game, it seems. I'm on eight and Park's on 19. That Merc Dwellers did so much work. There is a Crumble here. Now he's gonna go back up to 20, by the way, because Crumble gives life. So we made a little mistake there. Park should be on 20. I don't believe it's very relevant for the outcome of this game, but still. And Park finding a swamp now, by the way. So that could be pretty good for him. Into Dark Ritual. What can he do with all that mana? There's another Merc Dwellers. Oh, that's so sweet. That is so cool. I wonder at what stage he's going to attack.
it's still not i mean it's not a it, it's not favorable for him to attack i feel but you know you want to change something i mean i'm on eight if he can find a way to make his merc dwellers unblockable he have me dead he, he can have me dead in no time but first, let's see what I can do. Untapping here the forest. Looking at my top three cards again because of the Sylvan. Tapping three. There's another pit scorpion. Okay. I mean, maybe at a certain point I can do like an alpha strike if I have enough poison creatures, I guess. Not now, of course. I'll, I'll have to continue building up. I don't think Park has access to... An Earthquake, or does he? Does he have an Earthquake in his deck? I don't think he does. Not 100% sure, not trying to remember what his deck photo looked like. Anyway, he's playing a Carrion Ants. That is, that is problematic for me. Because he can pump that up to a 4-5. And this is going to be very tough for me to kill if he attacks. I have to put a lot of smaller creatures in front of the Carrion Ants. I don't see myself do, doing that. Playing another Elves of Deep Shadow... Passing to turn. There is a bat lance by Park. Looks like he's also kind of in the tank trying to find a way. I think this game could be decided by a fireball by Park. He needs some more mana, of course, first. But I can kind of see that happen. Then he just plays a fireball and wins the game. He could, of course, also use the Fireball to kill a lot of my smaller creatures. Like Earthquake against my board would be magical. If he would have an Earthquake, he would kill both of his own Merc Dwellers, but he can then also... He also has enough mana to play an Earthquake for two and pump the Carrion Ants to a 2-3. Looks like Park is thinking about an attack here. Could attack with the Carrion Ants wouldn't be that bad. Yeah, I think this is a good decision. He can he can pump it to a 5-6 now with all the mana. Remember, Park's still on 19. He should be on 20, of course, after the crumble. And he's got no poison counters. I'm asking here how many mana do you have? And just putting a uh, Elves of Deep Shadow in in front here of the, uh, the Carrion Ants. I mean, the 6 toughness means that I've got to block it with 6 creatures because all my creatures have power 1. So it's it's such a nightmare for me, this Carrion Ants. What am I going to do? You're tapping three. Do I have some land removal? Okay, an Ice Storm. At least that makes the Carrion Ants a little bit weaker. Taking care of the Badlands, of course. So that means no red options anymore for Park. Okay, finding a mountain. He's got a red options again. <laughs> at least at least now he doesn't have six lands to pump into his Carrion Ants. Only five still. I think if you're Park, you just want to attack again. I mean, I'm losing a creature a turn. And this is, again, is really difficult for me because do I want to continue chum blocking or do I just want to throw a lot of creatures in front of the bus? It is really difficult. This one carrying ants is a big problem for me. I'm really in the tank here trying to come up with something and, and thinking, do I need to block it with just a lot of smaller creatures? And my conclusion keeps being, I don't think I should. Also, because when I lose all those creatures, next turn, Park can start attacking again with his Merc Dwellers. Oh, False Orders! This is beautiful! False Orders and a Dark Ritual. And now he's going to deal how much? I mean, six damage? This is beautiful. False Orders making the Karen Ants unblockable. That's basically what it does... And I'm being uh, put on two here. I'm very close to losing this match. If Park now has any burn spell in hand, it is over. Two cards in hand. What a brilliant play by Park. And really nice to see False Orders making an impact on the board in game one and in game two. Another mountain here for Park. There's the attack with the Carrion Ants. I just have to throw another Elves of Deep Shadow in front of it. If he now has another False Orders, that will be so cool. Or I should do if I double block, because he can only take one blocker out. So if I double block, then at least he cannot play False Orders. Well, he can still, but it won't have that much effect. Still just doing the one chump. 
and he's passing the turn. Okay, so he's giving me another turn. If I can find my Desert Twister, I can kill the, the Carrion Ants at least. Okay, Hypnotic Spectre, that's something. I mean, he, Park doesn't have any flyers. Problem, of course, is he's, he's so high up and he's got no cards in hand. He's in top decking mode. Tapping. Okay, there's Chaos Orb. Is he going to flip the orb? He can, of course, first attack. Then when my blockers are declared, he could flip the orb. So now I'm thinking again. I mean, he can now make the Carrion Ants only a 4-5. Look at this. Blocking on everything. This is funny. I mean, at least the Hypnotic Spectre has two power. So I'm counting it out for him. I've got three, four, five, six... Seven points of power blocking against the Carrion Ants. Now he's going to activate the Chaos Orb. I'm responding with the Crumble. So now he gets two more life. He should go up to 22. Okay, at least he's counting his life now. That's something. That's good. I guess we, we remembered. And now he's pumping up the Carrion Ants to a 3-4. So that means he can divide three points of damage. I guess you want to kill my yeah, not expector and probably also my health caretaker here, because with health caretaker I can just take back any creature. Interesting, going for pit scorpion, which is not too bad for me because next turn in my upkeep, let's see if I do that, I can sack elves of deep shadow to yeah, sack elves of deep shadow to get back my hypnotic specter. So I'm kind of lucky here with that decision of Park. He's giving me this little opener. Still on two, though. I still feel like I'm, I'm, I'm not going to win this one. But you never know. If you're still in it, you're still in it. Two cards in hand, it seems. Playing another Ice Storm. Taking care of the factory because I'm so low right now. I just want to make sure that he's got less uh, frets to attack with. Only has those two Merc Dwellers. A.O. Pile, he can kill me with the A.O. Pile. Oh, man, that's it. A.O. Pile. Oh, actually, he's doing the Hypnotic Spectre. That's nice, Park. You're doing the honorable thing, I guess. And now you're going to attack with both of your Merc Dwellers, forcing me to block both. I, this is style, style points here, Park. This is style points. I'm actually <laughs> pointing it out. Uh, I got to block both. I got to do it. This is really nice, Spark. I'm really enjoying the second game and the way you're doing things. So sacking my own health caretaker, probably to get the hippie back. Hopefully I can find maybe another hippie. Then I will have two okay blockers for the Merc Dwellers. Can I find something? It looks like I can't. Pass passing the turn. Desert Twister would be quite nice here, but anyway, blocking one of the Merc Dwellers dead. I am dead, and I have to say, Parkman, style points in this game number two. You're playing so cool with the False Orders, with the Merc Dwellers, Black Lotus to cast it on turn one. Awesome stuff. I really, really love it. Uh, anyway, this is game two. It is 1-1, one, one. so get ready for game number three. Game number three. Here we go. So it's 1-1. One, one. That is nice. Starting here with an Elves of Deep Shadow turn one. This is what I want to do. Passing the turn. Let's see if I can find some more land removal in turn two. Part of me hopes I don't. Oh, talking about land removal. Here we see a strip mine. Again, the Black Lotus into a carrion ants. <laughs> oh, this is so funny. This is so funny. This is just hysterical. I wonder if I can find... Oh, there's the strip. Oh, I'm not even stripping the strip mine. Is there an ice storm? Maybe, yeah, ice storm on the uh, on the strip mine of Park here. Passing the turn. I mean, if Park can just have his land drop, he can uh, at least deal me one damage. Still, there's a bad lance. There's the attack, putting me on 18. Of course, for Park, it's difficult because he's also looking at that strip mine on my side of the board. Tapping two. Are we going to see a sinkhole? Sinkhole here. Only three cards in hand, though, and a pass. We haven't seen a Mana Flare, by the way, from Park in this match so far. There's a Mountain attacking me again, dealing one point of damage. Going to go to 16. 
Yeah, it's really, I mean, it's kind of tough. In a way, it's nice to play with this poison deck, but it's not always fun for my opponents because I'm just on this mana denial plan, which is not the most exotic thing to do. But then again, you know, it's just such so much fun if you manage to kill someone with poison counters. And I feel in black and green, it's just very tempting to go for the mana denial plan. Anyway, there's the attack with the ants. At least Park keeps finding lands, which is good news here for this uh, game number three. Another sinkhole, though. I'm finding a lot of land removal. Two sinkhole, two ice storm, and uh, my strip mine. That's kind of insane. Very bad luck for Park, or good luck for me, however you want to look at it. And it's going to be really tough for Park to, to keep finding lands. At least he's got a mace, meaning he doesn't have to take any damage from the Elves of Deep Shadow next turn. Untapping everything. Can I find something here? Maybe a Marsh Viper would be nice. Okay, there's the Marsh Viper. So that's the 1-2 creature from the dark when it deals damage to poison counters for my uh, for Park. Tapping for one black. There's a Paralyze on the Carrion Ants. It's not going to be that impactful, though. I'm... It's not really a good play. I probably just want to use all my mana, but still. Because, for example, you know, if Park finds another threat. Oh, look at that. Now it's a good play, though. Sinkhole on the maze, attacking him for two and two poison counters. Wow. So I think I've played three sinkholes so far this game. A strip mine and an ice storm. That's just brutal. Brutal stuff here. There's little that Park can do. He's on two poison counters. Going to go up to four poison counters now. Things are looking very bad for Park. Tapping two mana. There's a Sylvan. So that Sylvan's going to help me to dig a little bit deeper. Maybe find even more poison creatures. And Park now probably has to discard. This is not sweet. I mean, it is showing what my deck wants to do. This is how my deck wants to work. Look at that. It has to discard a Dark Ritual. You really don't want to do that. Dark Ritual actually quite good against these uh, land removal decks that I'm playing with. Looking at the board, trying to make a decision what card I want to take. Taking an extra card. Going to go down to 10. Playing a Mox Emerald. Tapping 2 mana. Playing a Demonic Tutor. What am I going to tutor for? Maybe a Pit Scorpion? I got enough mana to, to play it. Putting Park now on six counters, I believe. And I'm still looking for my card with the Demonic. And passing the turn here. Okay, there's, there's the Swamp. Does he have a Dark Ritual? Dark Ritual into something. Dark Ritual? Into an AO pile. That's actually really good. It can kill my Marsh Viper. That is really good. I'm kind of impressed because he only has one small tiny opening here with the Dark Ritual. And he finds the AO pile play. Dark Ritual into AO pile and has that one mana to activate it. Killing my Marsh Viper. Now, is the, now the question is, what did I look up? Another sink. No. This is sinkhole number four, I think. Really? That's insane. Anyway, tapping four. Going to go to nine. Do I have a Marsh Viper? No, I've got a Knowledge Vault. Oh, so I probably used my Demonic Tutor to look up Knowledge Vault. Knowledge Vault's a pretty cool card. It's four mana from Legends. Two and tap. Put the top card of your library under Knowledge Vault. And there's some nice synergy here with Sylvan Library. Because of Sylvan Library, I know what's on the top of my library. So I know what I'm putting under Knowledge Vault. So I can kind of use it to for two mana to kind of not draw the cards that I don't want to draw. Or, of course, put cards under there for later, and then I kind of know what's under my Knowledge Vault. It's, it's, it's pretty nice. Sylvan Library Knowledge Vault. It's pretty cool. Also, the art of Knowledge Vault is really nice. I believe by Amy Weber. There's a Badlands by Park and a Pass. So Park being on six poison counters, my problem, of course, is I don't have a poison creature. Attacking him for one, tapping three. Ooh, there's an Hypnotic Spectre. And I'm keeping two mana open to use my Knowledge Vault, probably on end step of Park here. Park casting Dark Ritual. Does he have another AO pile? He does. I love this, man. Those AO piles are doing some serious work. I believe they come in from the sideboard. 
They are super good against me. He has now killed an Hypnotic Spectre and a Marsh Viper. And here we go. End step activation there of the Knowledge Vault. Now, Part's on 11. I'm on 9. But it's all about those poison counters. He's on 6 poison counters. If I can find a Marsh Viper. Tapping 5. Tapping 6. Ooh, there's a Serpent Generator. That is pretty cool. So Serpent Generator, four and tap to get a 1-1 one, one Artifact Snake with Poison. So when it deals damage, part gets one Poison Counter. It is going to go really slow, though, because, I mean, next turn I can make one, but then it still has Summoning Sickness, obviously. So I'm going to untap here. Again, look at the Sylvan cards. I mean, I need one more land, actually, because I have six mana. Then I can use my Serpent Generator, and I can use my Knowledge Vault. That would be ideal. So two cards in hand. Oh, okay. No, I don't. I keep... It's hard for me to choose, I guess. <laughs> okay, finding a land. I mean, in a way, I already had six mana, I guess, with the Elves of Deep Shadow. But when you're on eight, you don't really want to use it too often. Passing the turn. So I'm going to do a lot on end step here. I think on end step I'm going to make a snake and use my knowledge vault. But we'll just have to wait and see. Park still has that one Batlands. And look at this. Using my Serpent Generator. There's the 1-1 one, one snake. Beautiful tokens that were sent to me by the Venetian Lions. In, uh, in Venice in Italy. There's a play group there. So one card in hand. And I can attack now with the snake, so I can at least put him on seven poison counters. Oh, but I can tell you, poison is hard work. Even when your land removal plan and mana deny plan is working perfectly like it is in this game number three, it's still kind of tough. It still takes long. It's still very slow. Two cards in hand, by the way. Attacking here with my one snake. So I'm going to put him on seven poison counters. If I can play out a Pit Scorpion and make um, a Snake on the end step of Park, I can kill him next turn. If he doesn't, you know, find a way to block or kill one of my creatures. Look at this. Tapping four. Yeah. Okay. So he's on seven. Remember, Marsh Viper A1-2 gives two poison counters if it's not blocked. So Park needs to find a way to deal with at least one of the two poison creatures. Oh, there's a Death Grip. Card from the sideboard, usually pretty good, but not now. Using my Knowledge Vault, I think it's game over here for Park in game number three. Untapping everything, right? Having my Sylvan Trigger. But Park is tapped out. It can just attack him with the Marsh Viper and my Artifact Snake. That's going to give him three poison counters. He's already on seven poison counters. Playing a Bayou, and they're going in for the Poison Kill. Attacking. Here we go. I mean, Park needs a card that I don't think exists. And uh, that's it. He's going to die to Poison, and I'm winning this match with my deck, Backwater Poison. But to be honest, I think the real winner here is, and yes, I'm getting a little sappy, I think the real winner here is Park because he's used that Black Lotus as a King of Kings Casting two times a Carrying Ants and once a Merc Dwellers. And also we saw False Orders in the games here. I just, I loved to see, or I love to see those kind of cards in action because they seem kind of forgotten. And uh, I think I should feature for um, that card in Forgotten Combos. That would be really, really sweet. Anyway, um, this was the match today. Let me know how you feel about these two decks. Uh, what would you improve? What would you change? And what rule set do you think these decks would uh, would shine in the most i think i actually think that maybe poison can get even better um in eternal central rules because you can use your your land removal to the max and you also have your him to turex for discard then again why would you then use poison as a win con yeah uh, anyway it's life is difficult rule sets are difficult thank you very much for watching before you go i'd like to ask you to do three things please like this video uh, comment on this video and if you want to of course share this video on your socials all these things help 
Timmy Talks grow and kind of shows your, uh, yeah, your appreciation for the content and tells YouTube that you find this a fun and entertaining video. So if you could do those three things or one of those three things, thank you very much for doing so. And before you go, please take a moment to check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks because there you can find our Timmy Talks Patreon program. And the cool thing about Patreon is, is that it is your possibility, your gateway into sponsoring the show and keep Timmy Talks alive. So please consider becoming a financial sponsor of Timmy Talks. It already starts with just $1 a month and you actually get some cool stuff back for becoming a patron here on Timmy Talks. You get access to the Timmy Talks Discord. You get access to the Timmy Talks online events. And at, at a certain tier level, you can also play a game against me and we can make an episode together. All that is possible if you join Timmy Talks on Patreon and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. What end scroll? This end scroll. Ich bin